Hi, Apple have released a new iPad. whoop de doo Wouldn't normally care a rat's. But there's something interesting about this in terms of engineering and marketing and design and volumetric engineering. So let's take a look at it. Sorry about my voice, by the way. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, from Tim Cook, Apple CEO. Meet the new iPad Pro, the thinnest product we've ever created. The most advanced display we've ever produced with the incredible power of the M4 chip. Absolutely amazing uh, tech, by the way. Um, just imagine all the things it can be used to create. And they've got a video which they're getting owned in the comments for. So let's take a look. Now, I won't play the audio because I'll probably get copyright uh, struck. They've got some music there and they've got like all this tech and instruments and they're gonna crush it on YouTube. Look at it, oh, the arcade cabinet. They're doing some artistic wankery with the paint here. I assume they're actually doing this. And there's a marketing point to this they're trying to make. It's a very bad point. But they're trying to make that we're taking all this artistic, all this art, you know, musical and art stuff, and we're compressing it down. And even the fun and the smiley face, we're all compressing it down into the one tiny, what's going to be revealed? The powerful iPad ever is also the thinnest. It's also the thinnest. There you go. So obviously, this is their big marketing push. It's the thinnest iPad Pro ever developed. And... Some people are going to go, oh, great, I want a thinner iPad. Well, okay, but what actually prompted this video is a uh, post from Pete Oxenham, who I'll link uh, down below. I just gave him a follow, and you probably should too. Machinist, software engineer, turned founder at Chatter Dev, making brains for CNC machines. Cool. Um, <laughs> opinions my own and most likely wrong. Well, I don't think he's wrong here. In fact, it's an interesting question. Hot take. The engineering resources put into making these devices ever thinner would be better spent elsewhere. Seems like putting arbitrary, maybe marketing, definitely marketing, um, constraints on super talented engineers. And they are. The volumetric engineering that goes into this thing is absolutely insane. Or, or your latest uh, shoe phone or whatever it is, right? These are absolutely amazing engineers doing absolutely incredible work here. But give them an extra millimeter and see what they can do. Hmm, well, we can run some numbers on that. Anyway, in case you care, here's all the marketing wakery, stunning new iPad Pro with the world's most advanced display, M4 chip and uh, Apple Pencil Pro. Um, at least in the headline here, they don't uh, make anything about the thinness, but of course, Tim Cook did here, that is the banner marketing wank claim here, the thinnest product we've ever created, which is fantastic, but what would happen if you gave it an extra millimeter? Now, it turns out that uh, this new iPad Pro does seem to have, even though it's thinner, does seem to have the same battery life as uh, the previous version here. So here's the new, I think it comes in, it comes in 11 inch and 13 inch uh, ones, and it seems to be, um, you know, and, and it's absolutely amazing tech. But they do mention it on their product page here. Uh, 11 inch model is just 5.3 and the 13 inch is 5.1. So somebody, at, in the design team, or multiple de designers went, oh, we can shave an extra 2.2 millimeters off this thing on the 13-inch model. Oh, that'll be something. I'm sure they were absolutely bummed that they couldn't get to 5 millimeters. Maybe that was the marketing spec, because how this often works is it's passed down from on high oh, on the stone tablets that this thing must be the thinnest iPad ever, and they'll go... Five millimeters, just like, you know, back in the old day, HP said, oh, the calculator has to fit in my shirt pocket. And that was the first HP 35 calculator. But yeah, they just choose these arbitrary numbers and it wouldn't surprise me at all if they came down from on high and said, I want it five millimeters thin, but it's got to have the same battery life. And they went, the engineers are just like gritting their teeth going, oh, we could get it to 5.3 in the 11 inch. We'll try harder. In the 13 inch, because we've got a bit more volume out, you know, volume out the uh, side. So maybe we can put a different battery in there and squeeze in a few extra watt hours in there into the battery while still saving 0.2 millimeters. So anyway, hats off to the Apple design team. Absolutely fantastic. But I've worked in things like this before. If you're in a design team, it comes down from on high. You have to do it this way. It's got to meet this particular spec. And then the engineers bust their ass to try and make it in that whether or not it's a good idea. Just so that marketing can get their runs on the board. And it, like, check out this, this new M4 processor, three nanometers. Oh, when I was a boy, it's three microns. 
Anyway, we do have the dimensions, I think, if these are correct. 11 inches by 8.5 inches by 0.2 inches here. Um, so we can convert that to millimetres, not using this Yankee rubbish. Now, of course, there's probably a, a few things you could do with an extra millimetre in there. You could put a better lens in the camera, uh, for example, a bit of better focusing or something. Something like that, right? You can do better things there, but you can do that as well as, of course, most of the space in a iPad-y type a tablet, tablet type thing um, is the battery, of course. So, and of course, everyone, there's no one who goes, oh, no, I don't care about extra battery life. Everyone wants extra battery life. So you, if you gave the design engineers an extra millimeter and then marketing said, nah, screw you, sorry, you can't have the thinnest, you know, thing ever to uh, marketing salivate over. Um, if they gave them an extra millimeter thickness, what would that add to the battery capacity? Well, we can actually do the calculation. Here is the battery for the uh, previous gen, which I think is the Pro 12.9. That is the sixth gen one. Sorry, I'm not an Apple fanboy, so if I get something wrong in this video, uh, uh, flame away in the comments. Anyway, so we'll take the previous battery, because uh, we don't know what the battery's like in the new one, but let's just, uh, you know, back of the envelope ballpark uh, calculations. Uh, the other one, the old battery is, uh, let's say six and a half inches by eight inches, but there's this big gap in the middle there. Um, so let's just say it's six and a half by six and a half inches by 0.8 inches. So once again, convert that to real units. And I just realized the stupid thing is, is that the cameras and other stuff stick out the bottom anyway. So, uh, so let's run some numbers based on the previous gen battery. Six and a half by six and a half inches by 0.08, 165 millimeters by 165 by two at 38 watt hours capacity. These are all sort of like rounded numbers, good enough for Australia, no worries. So that gives us a volume of almost 55,000 cubic millimeters there. And of course, if you divide the 38 watt hours by that, you get 700 micro watt hours per cubic millimeter for those playing along at home. Not that we need to get into this sort of uh, depth to know what an extra millimeter would give us because the old battery was two millimeters if we simply made the new battery an extra millimeter thicker that's an extra 50 percent so that's going to go directly into the capacity so the 38 watt hours would be increased by 50 percent so if you added an extra millimeter to this product you'd get at least at least a 50 percent increase in your battery capacity, but that wouldn't be good volumetric engineering because as you saw uh, in the thing here, this does not occupy the full space inside the unit, not only like in the middle strip, but also around the outside uh, as well. So what if you gave most of that extra space on the back uh, that wouldn't have any circuitry or anything else. If you could design your battery, you know, multiple layers of the battery, like they did two layers there, you can maybe add an extra, uh, like, you know, a third layer on there or something. What could you do with that, that, that extra? Well, let's just say it's 250 by 200 millimeters. Okay, I'm being kind of, like I'm sort of like uh, expanding it inwards a bit because you can't go right to the edge, but maybe you could. Good volumetric engineering design. You use every cubic millimeter inside this sucker, right? But let's just say 250 by 250, what does that give you? Well, you can do the by one millimeter uh, thick at roughly, at one millimeter thick here, that gives you 50,000 cubic millimeters. That's almost the same as the original battery. So, yeah. Right off the bat there, it looks like you can almost double the capacity of this iPad by adding one extra millimeter. What customer is going to say, oh no, I no, I want to save the extra millimeter, but halve the capacity. Even though it's the same capacity, the 10 hour battery life as the previous generation, how many people would opt for if you said, oh, I've got a 20 hour model, but it's an extra millimeter thick. How many people are going to want that? Everyone, because marketing is clueless. So yeah, it's just ridiculous. In, in practice, if you added that extra millimeter over here that uh, Pete asked about, see what they could do, just add in nothing extra, just having that one, one millimeter extra thickness for the battery capacity internal could probably double the battery life easily, easily at least 50% extra capacity. That means going from 10 hours to 15 hours. Imagine if they marketed a 20 hour model that's like an entire plane trip from Yankee land to Australia or vice versa. So uh, yeah, you can watch your iPad-y thing on the entire flight. Uh, yeah, I don't get it.
I don't get it. Like, why? Like, all this marketing wankery, right? It's the thinnest product we've ever created. Who cares, right? Give me extra battery capacity. Not that I'm ever going to buy one of these iPad-y things anyway, but... So thank you very much, Pete Oxenham, for uh, inspiring this little rant here. Couldn't resist running a couple of simple numbers on this thing. And ironically, Tim Cook gets owned here. I felt sad when I saw creative tools such as musical instruments and cameras being destroyed. I don't think the creators will like this video. Is my Japanese sensibility that makes me feel this way? Uh-uh. Crushing symbols of human creativity and cultural achievements to appeal to pro creators. Nice. I love it. iPhone and iPad users every time they upgrade to the newest model. <laughs> anyway, if you liked that video, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. And thanks for sitting through my terrible voice at the moment. Catch you next time.